So you mentioned before that the Incredible Hulk game was amazing. Yes. And the Superman games tend to fall short. How do you think you could go about making a good Superman game or a good Green Lantern game? Because there's so many superheroes and they don't get the love. I think a, a big problem is, like I said, like they, people tend to overthink things, especially when it comes to Superman because he's you know, all the way up here. He's the top superhero. He's the most powerful. He's the nicest guy in the world. You know, how do you make a game about that? How do you create conflict and things like that? And it's, it's just, look, Superman's been around for 80 years. Like, people make stories about Superman for the past 80 years. So it's possible. You just have to, like, take a step back and look, like, what are the cores of the character? He's, he's always willing to help people. He's able to defeat people that no one else can. Um, yeah, he can, he can and does get his ass kicked a lot. Um, but he's the type of person who can get up and keep going until he finishes the fight. So and you and there have been games like that before. Um, you just have to apply that same concept to Superman. I think one of the biggest problems with superhero games is that, like in the past, they these developers just got this IP and the the license holders are just like, make this game, put it out as quick as possible. We don't really care. Yeah. So that's why those games aren't bad, and they hope and they're hoping that the license will. Uh, the name will just sell yeah, copies. They the don't really game, care how yeah. good it is. Yeah, I was a big fan of the Death and Return of Superman on the Sega Genesis. Yeah, but that straight up had a life bar. There was like no yeah. like <laughs> Superman mechanics, and yeah. you pretty much die in the first level, and then you're you play as all the other Supermen. Yeah. It's been over a year since Bob and I answered that question at PAX 2019. Back then, I was a lot thinner. I didn't have all of this on my face. I wasn't a dad, and I was allowed to actually go places. It's amazing what can happen in only a year. But one thing that hasn't changed is my answer to this question. I do believe it is possible to make a good video game starring Superman. And today, I wanna to talk about it, go in a little bit more detail into why I think you can do a good Superman game. And hopefully with the next generation of consoles on the horizon, we'll actually get to see that game be made and released. I mean, Rocksteady's gotta be working on something, right? I know that they said they aren't working on Superman, but they lied before. Remember when they said the Arkham Knight wasn't a pre-existing character and then it turned out to be Jason Todd? That's a lie. By my count, there have been 18 video games starring Superman. We're not counting Justice League games like Injustice or DC Universe Online or the Lego Batman games that he appears in. I'm talking about solo Superman video games. That's not a bad amount for any video game series. By comparison, there have been 19 official Legend of Zelda games, and they've been making those for about as long as they've been making Superman titles. I know, I know, that is not a good comparison to make. The Legend of Zelda is a heralded series in the world of video games. Each entry gets nominated and wins several Game of the Year awards, each one setting the standard for all video games to follow, while the Superman series of video games is definitely not that. It's not safe for you to be here, Jimmy. I'd rather face those bots instead of going back to the Chief without pictures. But if you think about it, there really has only been one truly disastrous Superman game. Of course, Superman 64. That game is deservedly remembered as one of the worst games ever made. But the funny thing about this game is that it sort of created this fog, ironically enough, around other Superman titles. It sort of created this idea in the public eye that all Superman games, regardless of when they came out or who made it, are just low rated bottom of the barrel trash. Kind of like how after Sonic 06, a lot of people tend to think that all Sonic games are bad. Which of course we know is not true. There have been many great Sonic the Hedgehog games released over the years. But Superman doesn't even have that to fall back on. Not one Superman game is ever thought of in a positive light. And you would think with 18 games released starring this guy, at least one of them would rise above the ranks and be considered better than fine, I guess. 
Some have had good elements and ideas to them. Superman Returns had a fully open metropolis to explore. Shadow of Apocalypse felt like you were playing an episode of the animated series. I even think that the death and return of Superman implemented the character's superpowers in interesting ways. It's just that on a whole, these games could never rise above the lower level of mediocrity. So then why can't Superman, the original superhero, and some would say the greatest superhero, have at least one decent game made? It's a question that I've racked my brain around for quite some time. I know the most common answer is that Superman is just too strong. He's too powerful, he has too many abilities, and that wouldn't make for a fun and exciting video game. There wouldn't be any challenge to what you're doing if the character you're playing as is too strong too powerful and could easily solve all problems. And okay, sure, there may be some truth to that, but honestly, I think that's missing the bigger picture here. If we're being completely honest, the reason why Superman video games all range from fine, I guess, to abysmal is the same reason why most licensed games are pretty bad. There are lower budgeted projects that have very short development cycles and get rushed out the door in the hopes to cash in on the name of the property rather than the fact that they've made a good product. And it's a shame that Superman got caught in this vicious cycle, especially when many of his comic book contemporaries have risen above these trappings. Batman, for example, has had many great video games, even outside of the Arkham series. The Batman 89 video game on NES is considered by many to be a classic of the system, and many people, myself included, enjoy the adventures of Batman and Robin on SNES and Genesis. Spider-Man, of course, has had a crap ton of really good video games over the years. Hell, he had one of his best video games of all time just a few years ago. The X-Men have had a lot of really good games released on Genesis and the arcade, even on the PS2 GameCube era with X-Men Legends. The Punisher had a very fun game on the PS2 and the original Xbox. Hell, I still consider Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction to be the definitive Incredible Hulk experience across any media. And yes, I will fight all of you who disagree with me on this. These characters all show that it is possible for superheroes to work in the realm of video games. And this goes a long way to proving my theory that the idea that Superman doesn't work because he's too powerful is a bull statement. Seriously, think about it for a minute. The point of superhero video games is to feel powerful, to be able to do incredible things that no mere mortal can do. What makes Superman any different from all the other superheroes that have gotten successful video games in this regard? And if you go a little further, you will see a whole slew of power fantasy video games where you play an unstoppable badass just wrecking house. I mean, that was the whole point of the last two Doom games, remember? Hell, for most of the God of War games, Kratos, you know, your player character, is the actual God of War. So I guess playing an actual god in a video game is fine, but playing an alien who's powerful like a god? Oh, that'll never work. So yeah, I definitely think it is possible to make a good Superman video game, especially in this day and age. And with next generation consoles on the horizon, it isn't a matter of whether or not technology can provide a good Superman game. I'm pretty sure it can. It's a question of whether or not Warner Brothers Interactive and whoever they get to develop it can rise to the occasion and make a good Superman game. I'm sure this wouldn't be a problem though. Warner Brothers is a company with the resources to make it happen. They do nickel and dime us all the time in games like Mortal Kombat and Injustice and whatnot. But the question then would become, what would a Superman game actually look like? Would it be open world? Would it be more linear? What would the combat look like? How would flight be handled? You know, things like that. Well, if you ask me, which I know you didn't, when it comes to the argument of going open world versus linear, um, yeah, it makes sense to go open world with a character like Superman having a whole metropolis to explore at your leisure or even making it more of a Metroidvania type game. But I think Superman can work with a more linear level to level style of gameplay. This way you can make it a little bit easier to explore more than just Metropolis. You can do things like have the first level take place in Metropolis, then have the second level be a flying mission off to some other part of the world and so forth and so on, do it like that. This way you can sort of make the game feel much bigger than it actually is. But really open world gameplay versus level to level linear gameplay isn't what's gonna 
make or break this hypothetical Superman game. The real question is, what are the moment to moment elements going to be? This falls in line with trying to solve the whole Superman's too powerful, Superman can't really die, Superman doesn't really get defeated question that has plagued many people trying to come up with good ideas for a Superman game. But if you think about it, if you actually go and look at comics and even the TV shows and movies, Superman's not completely invincible, he's just mostly invincible. He's stronger than everyone else on Earth, sure, but he does get his ass kicked quite a bit. This is especially true of alien enemies, enemies who are just as powerful, if not more powerful than him, and also magic-based adversaries. Remember, Superman is just as vulnerable to magic as he is to kryptonite. So really, if you just make all of the enemies non-humans, like aliens, robots, magicians, or dudes in mech suits, then you can come up with scenarios where Superman has to fight those who are just as powerful, if not more powerful than him, and it can pose a significant challenge. Hell, you can even have moments in the game where he does come across regular humans, like trying to rob a bank or something, and they can pose as fun little mini games or side quests or whatnot. What the developers have to try and do is set up the limits of Superman's powers within the context of their particular video game. If you do that and do that correctly, then we won't really bat an eye when Superman has trouble beating up somebody in a mech suit or some random alien. But then of course you have that moment in Justice League Unlimited where he's taunting Darkseid, saying he always holds back, but now he can finally cut loose and show his true power. That's not to say you can't do that in the video game, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So finding a challenging foe for Superman isn't necessarily a problem, especially once you stop trying to overthink it. The next step though is trying to figure out how to create a fail state for this particular video game. A game over basically, a way to signify to you the player that you failed to complete a certain task or you weren't good enough to progress forward. This is mostly done in action games by having you die. This is kind of a problem with a character like Superman who isn't killed very easily. Pretty much all previous Superman games just ignore this and give the character a traditional life meter. Superman Returns actually does something interesting by giving Metropolis itself its own life meter, which actually kind of makes sense if you think about it. Now, I'm not saying giving Superman a life meter is bad. I think it would actually work for a video game, but it would have to make sense. Regular enemies would like just chip away at it, and the more he progresses and he gets the bigger characters, like say Mongol or Doomsday and whatnot, they actually cause significant damage to the character. But I think it's also important, especially for a character like Superman, to create extra scenarios, like say failing to save certain civilians or not getting something to Lois in time that can create extra challenge and therefore extra chances for a fail state to compensate for the fact that his life meter isn't gonna deplete as quickly as other games of this type. And then other than that, it should just be a matter of trying to figure out combat and flight. Superman isn't a ninja like Batman is, so free-flowing combat like the Arkham games wouldn't really work for this kind of character. You have to go more in a Dark Souls, Bloodborne direction for the melee combat. Just, you know, easier. This is Superman we're talking about after all. You're gonna want his game to reach a much wider market than the hardest of the hardcore. Things like his heat vision and his freeze breath, those are really just his projectiles, so you can treat them like firearms in a traditional game. Have them selectable on the D-pad and then have them use it by using the triggers. Left trigger to aim and right trigger to fire. It's simple as that. X-ray vision is basically just the same thing as detective vision and every game has that so why not include it here? And maybe you can even have different levels to his abilities. This would add a layer of upgradability to the character and have him progress over the course of the game. You can do something like have a special meter that gets filled up so that Superman can unleash his freeze breath and it freezes the entire room. Or for something out of the modern comics, you can have his heat vision build up over time and unleash that solar flare thing that he did back during the New 52 era. Now honestly, flight may be a little tricky. I can't really think of a third person video game that had truly exceptional flight mechanics, but I think given enough time, they would be able to figure something out. I would say maybe wait until after Square Enix's Avengers game comes out to see how they handle Iron Man and Thor flying around and maybe just copy the good ideas from that. I did play Square Enix's Avengers game at New York Comic Con last year and I remember the flight sections being fine, kind of clunky. I'm sure that's something they could polish before the final product. 
And hopefully they do so that whoever is making a Superman game can just rip them off. Now look, obviously I'm not a video game developer. I don't know what it takes to actually go and make a Superman game like the one I'm describing. I do know that game development is very hard and I'm sure there are many concessions that would have to be made in order to make a true AAA Superman title. But I think what we have here is a good solid baseline to start with. All it takes is the right amount of time and money in order to get this project off the ground. It's a simple matter of not overthinking it. You're making a Superman video game, so just make a video game. Look at what worked in other titles, not necessarily other Superman or superhero titles, but other video games of similar ilk in general. See what worked, what didn't, and go from there. Eventually, things like Superman specific powers and abilities will just fall into place, and then you can focus on the more fan servicey stuff like getting the cast of the animated series to do all the voices. At the very least, you should get Dana Delaney and Clancy Brown to do Lois Lane and Lex Luthor respectively. Anyone else doing their voices is just wrong. That is a fact. And make sure you get a comic book writer to help out with the story. I'm sure Jeff Johns is gonna be all involved in this because he somehow always is. But maybe ask Dan Jurgens to help out. He's been writing Superman for like three decades by this point. Or maybe Peter Tomasi or Brian Michael Bendis. They had some of the best Superman runs of the last five years. So what do you think about a potential Superman video game? Do you think it could work? What would you like to see in a product like this? Or do you think there's no hope, it's impossible, and Superman will just never be in a good video game? Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. Also, are there any Superman games from the past that you actually enjoyed? I know there's a fan base out there for Shadow of Apocalypse and the 79 Atari 2600 Superman game. I remember thinking the arcade beat em up from way back when was pretty cool, but I'm sure it hasn't aged well. And yes, because I'm sure it's been written in the comments a hundred times by now, I am aware of Undefeated, that game on Steam that is basically cool guy Superman. I don't have a gaming PC, so I haven't played it. If you put it on the Switch, then we will talk. Looks cool though, and I think it might be on something there. And of course, don't forget that we have new videos on this channel every single Tuesday and Wednesday, with Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern being Wolf Den Live. So subscribe to see all of that, like this video, and share it with a friend. A friend who is convinced that it is impossible to make a good Superman video game, because they're wrong, and they're not really your friend. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time.